Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome back to PBTV. I'm Stu, and we are live on YouTube and Facebook. Uh, thought I'd bring a classic out for you uh, today, start of a new week. So we'll start a little bit of a new trend this week. So we're going to look at... Um, Platforms that are sort of more de dedicated to uh, new players, but if you're a regular player and you've not had one of these, they are absolutely awesome. So the first one, uh, one that we're going to touch on this week is the Pioneer Breacher from New Pro. So pick this one um, purely because it's super light, it's super compact, it's got uh, some cool little bits on it, and internally it's a little bit better than just all the standard stuff that we have out there at the moment. So as always, we'll go through its features, we'll go through what it's got, what it can do. If you've got any questions on it at all, please drop them in the comments below. We'll flash it up on screen uh, and make sure it gets answered as quickly as possible. So as always with these, we'll start at the front and work our way back. Um, so... The, ver the slight difference with this one, instead of having a flash hider, it has what's called a sound hog. So these are designed to make um, the BB, the sort of firing noise a little bit louder. Uh, creates a little bit of a pop, a bit of a bang, instead of it just being the uh, standard uh, BB coming out of the end. It does have a standard 40mm counterclockwise thread underneath there, so if you want to swap it out, that's totally doable. Uh, and the sound hogs are about the same size as a Spitfire, so you could swap them out uh, absolutely no problem if you're wanting to use tracer BBs or anything like that. Coming back, we have a uh, sort of a quad rail with a slight twist. So, quad rail on the front has uh, riz rail on the right, left and bottom, uh, and a little bit on the top, a standard and a delta ring style attachment here. So the delta ring is you pull it, you pull the delta ring back, it unlocks the spring and you can split this apart and take it off the delta ring that is inside. Uh, quite a very simple and easy way to swap uh, rails out and it is quite a, uh, a sturdy platform as well. What we have that's slight different on the top, so we have a short section of riz and then this link plate that goes from the riz, uh, from the rail onto the receiver. What that does is it completely eliminates any possible wobble on the front left and right because it locks the rail to the receiver via the riz. I, like personally, normally I put my uh, optic across that just as a little uh, stop gap. But what they've done is they've just attached it permanently and giving you an, a riser in there as well. So a lot of people nowadays, especially if you're wearing full face uh, or even uh, lower uh, mesh, getting a good cheat weld uh, and eyes down on um, a T1 or a dot sight or a holographic can be quite difficult. Uh, just purely because you've got so much gear up here, it's quite hard to get down and get a clean uh, sight picture. So people are putting risers on them. Um, so this has one pre-built in. You stick an EOTech on that, it raises it half an inch, means that you don't have to get all the way down and tuck in, you can just get a clean picture through it, which is a massive bonus. What that allows you to do is mount slightly further forward, giving you a bit more real estate on the back if you want to put magnifiers on here. Um, and again, with the flip-up iron sights that come with it, they are also dual function. So, flip these down, locks in place, and you simply press them and they flick up. What you'll have when these are down is you have a low profile set of iron sights pre-built in. So these are more like pistol iron sights. So you've got the uh, T bit at the back and a dot at the front. Once they are up, click and click, you have a peephole and a pin sight. Very, very easy to use. And again, even the back one can drop down and you've got the uh, two different size apertures. Real steel counterpart is night and day diff, uh, sights, but again, it's just personal preference. I'd probably leave it down and use the, uh, the larger. Uh, hole so very easy to look through and again if you are uh, quite low profile and you want to be super slick you can, you can use the sort of pistol style ones the once they are drop down like this they aren't adjustable so there's no windage or elevation on the uh, micro sites but once you have them popped up and ready to go the front pin can be raised up and down for elevation and the back one can be wound left and right for windage so loads of options with the optics that fit it but you've got loads of options with the pre-built riser, the um, uh, riz on the receiver, and plenty of real estate for grips, pec boxes, lasers, torches, absolutely anything you want on the front. So if you've got accessories, you, you've got a build in mind, this has a slot for it, and you can just build this up to an absolute uh, weapon. So coming back to the receiver, again, because it is a, a standard platform, it is right-handed dominant. So fire selector, uh, so safe, uh, semi, and full auto and a nice little uh, contact trigger there. So very positive, really, really nice. The bolt hold open device on the left-hand side 
is semi-functional, so when you rack it back, you will find a gear-style hop unit in there. It's nice and bright, so pretty easy to see when you're uh, in a in a trying to adjust it in the dark or if you're in a, a shaded woodland or anything. So adjusting this will uh, change the hop inside your platform, and what that does is the more hop you apply, it presses down on the top of the BB, creating backspin. So if you fire this with no hop on, it just drops. You add a bit of hop, it'll fly nice and straight, and if you've got a little bit too much on, it will then rise upwards, allowing very, very fine and clean adjustment, making it really, really good to get clean, accurate shots at range. Once you've finished adjusting it, you just press the paddle on this side and it closes and you're good to go. Again, with entry-level uh, platforms, we do like to see uh, high cap magazines, and this is no different. So you've got a 300 round high cap on here, meaning that you don't have to really budget in for loads and loads of mags. You can fit 300 BBs in this and just good to go. What you will find is when this is full, there's a little wheel on the bottom that you have to wind. Once this is in, you need to wind it with the magazine vertical so that it can feed BBs from the chamber up into the tube. If you turn it over to wind it, all the BBs drop into this bit of the chamber and it can't pick any up. So when you are winding your magazine, make sure you do it vertical. Uh, and then that's back in. Mag release is on the right hand side. Oh, we've got questions coming in on YouTube already from Nind. Uh, not about this platform, but what eye protection do you recommend? Uh, and... Uh, I'd, uh, and which don't fog up. When it comes to iPro, uh, there's a lot of factors that come into play with whether or not you're wanting full face, uh, goggles, uh, glasses, uh, a combination of lower, upper, lower, um, and budget as well. I mean, the walk helmet is, some people say is the, the pinnacle, but it is very, very expensive, but it's got thermal lens, it's got a helmet built in, it's got lower mesh. So again, that's really up on the high end and it will not fog because of the thermal lens and dye masks are very similar to that. If you're going sort of uh, lower end and you're just wanting glasses or goggles, have a look at Bolly uh, because they do uh, this the uh, Cilium Platinum series, which has a new coating on it, which is very, very hard to steam up. If you're still having problems with it, have a look at the X-Fog system. So rather than the actual changing your goggles all the time, if you've got a comfy set, you can get what's called an X-Fog system. goes on the back of your helmet, and it's almost like a computer fan that then forces air around in some tubes onto your glasses and keeps them nice and clear. Because the best way to keep your glasses clear is by movement, the air flowing through your goggles, and this does it even when you're stationary. So there's plenty of options, but um, it all depends on budget and what style you're after. But there's plenty out there. Um, so, uh, a quick other look, uh, looking at mag release is on the right hand side, uh, where you'd find it, uh, on normal platforms. And again, just drops the mag out and you can roll it, uh, roll it in nice and easily. This will accept any standard AEG, uh, mid and high cap and probably beta and box mags. So to, however you're wanting to run this very, very easy to do so. Coming to the back end, we've got sling points are two on the left hand side and one on the right hand side. Uh, so you can, uh, single or two point this at the back. Crane stock, stock tube, uh, six positions, comes all the way back and all the way forward, and you can put it into any spot in between. This is all down to whether or not you're quite short, stocky, or you've got big long arms. It makes it more comfortable to hold in different positions. Taking the stock off, you'll find your uh, Tamiya connector where you can uh, then put battery into the stock tube. So it does only accept stick style batteries, but the stock tube is plenty, there's plenty of space in there to fit a sort of 1450 uh, milliamp battery. Uh, so that's uh, plenty of uh, oomph to get you going throughout a day. But as always, we recommend having at least two batteries on uh, a single game day. So a couple of things that I'll... Uh, internally look at so uh, this does as a standard platform come with a tight bar so 6.03 millimeter meaning it's going to be really nice and accurate even with uh, what you deem as quite a short barrel uh, and it is just it's quite lightweight as well i think that's the one thing that i found out when i picked this up um the, the chunk of the weight is sort of at the back here so when it's shouldered it is very comfortable it's very maneuverable super short so if you start playing at cqb Really, really good for cutting around corners. Yeah, I think it comes in about two kilos, but most of the weight at the back, so it is very, very balanced. Uh, and then even when you go outdoors with that tight bar, you're going to find it It still reaches out and performs outdoors as well. So I'll do a very, very quick overview of what we've covered. Again, if there's any other questions, just flash them up uh, and we'll, we'll, we'll uh, have a little chat about them. But sound hog on the front uh, and then a quad rail with a slight difference at the... Uh, 
at the front here with uh, the flip-up iron sights on it. So you've got the quad rail with the Riz on the right, left, bottom and top, but then you have this new riser link plate uh, piece here. So what that means is it completely eliminates the wobble between the Riz and the receiver, and it means that if you put an optic on here, it's already raised slightly. So the guys that run full face lower masks, if you are trying to get a cheat weld, it can be quite hard to get eyes on certain optics. This raises it a little bit, uh, People are getting the unit amounts and things like that are becoming a bit of a fad uh, and very, very cool at the moment. This is pretty much a pre-built unit mount already in as part of the rail. So it raises your holographic, raises your T1 just that little bit more, making it easier and uh, simpler to get eyes down range. Uh, 54 Dunk, don't most M4 Stanag mags fit? So the term Stanag mag is just a colloquial term for the standard metal box style mags. This is uh, then called a P-Mag and anything like that. But the M4 magazine is a Stanag mag. So it's just a standard NATO magazine. So anything that is 556 uh, equivalent AEG-wise will just uh, rock into this totally fine. So your metal Stanags, P-Mags, box mags, drum mags, mega mags, absolutely anything like that. If it fits a standard M4 AEG, it'll lock straight in here and feed totally fine. Uh, so... Coming to, uh, oh, we're getting more in, thick and fast. Nick Pratt, what's the best mid cap for it? Again, there's the, it's not, there's not a best one, we'll say. It's just they will all work. So if you have a preferred mid cap, so if you're wanting the sort of um, DPM ones with the 250 rounds but still not having to fill them uh, through a window, they'll work. If you want to get the new Prol N mags, I think they're called, that swap between 30 and 130 in case you want to do real caps, they'll work. Uh, any any mid cap mag will work with this. It all comes down to the style that you want to look. So if you want a P mag or a Stanag look, or if you quite like the EPM style look with the uh, gas, um, the fuel gauge in it, uh, and having 250 rounds in what's essentially a mid cap is really really cool. But as an entry level platform, if people are looking this because they're starting out, high caps are just that really cool thing that allow you to start playing without having to buy five or six mid caps to be able to run you can just throw 300 bbs in this and run around happy all day and just have a bottle of bbs with you refill your mag and go again you're not having to spend all that money on loads of different mid caps so they do serve a purpose but again uh, down the line it is quite fun running mid caps because reloading is part of the game and uh, it, it gets your adrenaline going when you need to do it really quick so again, looking at the receiver, uh, it is a uh, polymer receiver and right-hand dominant with the charging handle exposing a gear-style hop unit in there. Uh, fire selector, uh, safe, semi, full auto, and a nice positive click on the trigger, meaning you can bounce it really nicely, uh, and, and it's, very, very, it's very clean and nice to pull is that one, uh, and you know where you're going. Coming back to the sling plate, again, two on the left, one on the right, meaning you can single or double mount this really, really easily. And these uh, spring-mounted uh, flip-up irons on the top are dual purpose, so you have almost micro pistol-style ones on the bottom. And then when you do flip these up, you've got aperture and pin iron sights going as well. Uh, full... Uh, Stock tube, uh, you do have to take the stock off to uh, fit a battery into this. So the battery goes into the stock tube and then put your stock back on. But the stock tube is nice and thick. There's, not a, there's no MOSFET or anything in the stock tube. It's just wiring. So you can fit a decent size uh, battery in there, probably up to a 1400 or a 1450 uh, stick battery. But that's everything for today. We've covered a lot of information. Uh, it's always good to talk to you. Um, but yeah, we will be back every day this week with... Um, Things based around sort of new players, um, entry level sort of budget. So if you've got anything that you're thinking about, you're new into the sport and you're a bit confused of uh, of what to get first, drop us a message. We'll throw it to the top of the list uh, and get that information out there as quickly as possible. Uh, and if it's a, a platform that we've got in at the moment, uh, we'll probably bump it to the top of the list and do it this week just so you get a bit more information if it's something you want to get your hands on. But that's uh, everything for today. This has been the Pioneer Breacher. We'll be back again tomorrow at about 4pm. Uh, so if you want to come in and join us have a chat, we'll be here. So I'll see you in a bit. Bye.